in some ways, these two stories, these testimonies, modeled precisely what the scriptures talk about. It really begins with Acts. Peter had no idea that God would ever call him to go be with Gentiles. And yet, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit asked of him. He had no choice. Either be obedient or say no, even though he never ever would have expected. There was actually nothing in his background that would prepare him for what the Lord was doing. But you see, that's what happens when you're called by God. See, you're called to love people. That's really the heart of it, as well as to love God. And to love people means you can't discriminate. He sends you all kinds of people, sometimes people that you love and care for easily, and others that you wish weren't there, right? Nod your head. Sometimes there are people in your life that you wish weren't there. But there's still people that God has called you to love. That's the context for the gospel reading. You, you see, this is the Last Supper. It begins by saying, and when he went out, who is he? It's Judas. Judas had gone to betray Jesus. The forces were now set in motion that would result in a mockery of a trial, the torture of being beaten 39 times in a way that would tear his flesh, and finally walked out bearing that heavy cross, stripped naked to the sun, nailed up on that cross to go through a long suffocating death. It was, in fact, the worst form of capital punishment probably ever devised by humankind. And yet, what Jesus says is, as this is taking place, now the Son of Man is glorified. In other words, John says over and over through his gospel that what actually looks like love is what we see Jesus doing as he is betrayed, as he is mocked, and as he is crucified. So that even in the ugliness of all that he endures, he says, woman, behold your son. Taking care of his own relatives, saying even in that agony to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. That's, that's what love is. You see, even though love might be courteous and kind, it is far more than courtesy. Although it is that. If you're rude, you're certainly not being loving. It's more than kindness. Although love, in fact, is kind. It is actually self-sacrificial love. It is love that goes way beyond what you ever expect would be asked of you. It is the kind of love that demands more than you ever thought you had it to be able to give. It's not a call of somehow imitating what Jesus has said. In fact, what this commandment is meant to do, especially within this context of Jesus' betrayal, death and resurrection, is to throw us on our own sense of emptiness. God, I don't think I can love like that. I think about myself too often. I, I want to be appreciated. I don't know how to love when I don't get it back. I need you to do a work in me that I, in fact, cannot create for myself. That's what this commandment does, is that it throws us into the place of facing our own lack of ability to be able to love, asking God to work something new in us that actually reflects that love, the love that will not let us go, the love that forgives 70 times 7, the love that goes the extra mile, that gives away the tunic as well as the cloak, the love that Jesus demonstrated again and again and again and again. As William Temple wrote a while ago, it takes a penetrating conversion to allow that kind of love in. And yet, that is exactly what we see in Jesus. It's courageous, it's tough. It's full of compassion. 
It continues to give even at great personal cost. Even when you thought, oh, this is too much to be asked of me. It is exactly in that arena. When we come to the end of ourselves, when we don't feel like we have anything left to be able to give, when we cry out to God and say, God, I don't love this person at all, and I need you to do something new in me if I'm actually going to love him, if I'm going to love her. That's what this love is. A new commandment I give to you. New, why? Because while the love had always existed between the Father and the Son, the love that we see manifested in Jesus, the new commandment is that that love, the love that we actually see in God, would be manifested in and through us. That's the newness of the commandment. Love one another, no, not just that. Love one another as I have loved you. That's the new commandment. That's the offertory sentence, walk in love as how? As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. What? An offering and a sacrifice to God. It's this kind of love. It causes you to spend your money even ways that you thought, I can't do that. It causes you to lay out your time when you have way too many other things to do. It causes you to expend yourself in a way that actually causes other people to see something new about who Jesus is. Because that's the point. It's not just that we love each other because we enjoy each other's company, although many of us do. It's not just that we're called to love each other because people need that kind of love, though all of us need that kind of love. It is meant, in fact, to be a living demonstration that God can, in fact, show the world that Jesus is alive. And how do they see that, we're, uh, that he is alive? By this kind of supernatural love being worked in us and through us. This kind of self-sacrificial, this kind of going way too far kind of love. This love that demonstrates something that is far bigger than our ability to muster the courtesy, the like, and the kind word. It is those things, but it is far, far more. You see, it is the absence of that kind of sacrificial love that more often than not is the thing that causes people who are not Christians to look at us and say, why? Why do, why do I want to do that? It's not a new problem. John Chrysostom, preaching in the 4th century, said, it is this lack of love in action that is the greatest stumbling block to outsiders. There is nothing else that causes non-Christians to stumble, he, he writes, except that there is no love. We, we are the cause of their remaining in error, and they are hindered by our mode of life. If people aren't coming to Christ in this community, the question has to be, Lord, how might we do a better job of loving you and loving other people? What are you calling us to do that we're not doing that more deeply demonstrates that kind of love? I have to tell you, that's the question that I ask myself. God, how can I love in the way that you ask? And it is that love that throws me on the bed of my own inadequacies and causes me to ask God to work something new in me that I might somehow be able to express that kind of new commandment I give to you, Jesus says. Because you see, this love is demonstrable. It is action. Little children, John writes, let us not just learn love in word, but in deed, he writes. In other words, what we're talking about is things that we do together in a way that expresses the kind of love that is different from what others might see around them, that says something powerful and important, even though it may be the smallest of actions, around the fact that Jesus is present and that he loves and that he cares. What I loved about Stephanie and Casey's stories is that they said, and rightly so, that it was that kind of love in action that made the difference. 
they in many ways were the sermon examples. No more needed to be said except to say, thank you God that they were the recipients. Lord, help me to be one that demonstrates that same kind of love. Calvin, in his, he always has great words. He says this, the chief characteristic of God that is revealed in Jesus is his love, his self-sacrificial love. For in the cross, as in splendid theater, the incomparable goodness of God is set before the world. That is who, what we're called to do, to be such a demonstration of the love of God that as in theater, people on the outside looking in says, what? By this shall all people know that you are my disciples. Look how they love each other. And it comes down to you and I in a very real day-to-day -day way saying, okay, Lord, I can muster on most days courtesy and kindness, right? Right? Most of us know how to do that. But this kind of sacrificial love is your work. I need you to do that in me and through me. And he will. That's the glory of it. He desires a group of people who actually in some way reflect that great love because he loves people out there just as much as he loves us. No one is without meaning or significance or purpose. And without that love, the church degenerates into a club, a group of people who kind of like each other and have a, a religious affiliation and pretty much look like each other. It doesn't look like the kingdom. The kingdom is the place where sacrificial love is demonstrated. Not just to the people who come in, but to the people who are out there. We have a whole bunch of people who are going to be confirmed this morning. They are going to make enormous commitments. I mean enormous, if you take the liturgy seriously. And guess what? So will the rest of us. We'll be reaffirming the same commitments that we made in baptism and in confirmation. I pray that the words don't just sort of glide over your head. Believe me, they almost hit me like grenades every single Sunday. Lord, work in me what you desire for this kind of love to be manifested. I, I can't do it, but you and me, that's different, Paul. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Open the doors. Help me see, Lord, where I might be able to give. Not to Im imitate you, but by your power to demonstrate, not imitate, but to demonstrate that love being worked through us into you and me and this community that needs to both give and receive that kind of love so desperately. There are plenty of people in Lakeland. There are lots of churches. What will distinguish this church? What will distinguish this church? By this shall all people know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. May God work that in our midst. That this community might see and know a group of people who are learning how to lay down their lives. Because that's what Jesus does, both for us, but in us. May God give us what we need to be able to do it. Let us pray.